Okay, now let's go to the website and we'll see how all of this works. Here we are. There's two websites you can see, Clawing for the Stars, Chronicle of Pedro de Merida. Let me address uh, the Chronicle. That's a separate book. It's already written. Publisher doesn't have it yet because uh, I'm still working on the website. And besides, I intend it to come out after the Clawing for the Stars book. So let's enter the Clawing for the Stars site and begin going through some of what you see here. Table of Contents and Selected Chapter Passages. I just put this here. If you click on Chapter 1, you can see I put out there some couple of paragraphs, some sentences from the text of that particular chapter. Just say go to Chapter 5. It's the same thing there. Mighty Pieces, Chapter 7. More there. Just give a sense to the reader of what's coming up. I want to say something just briefly about the Google Earth tours and how they came about. This happened at Easter time in 2012. The family was over and, and I had been playing around with uh, Google Earth and I had been working on it for a couple of months and I brought Alex, my grandson, in and I said, look, I, I can take you right down to um, you know, a particular peak that I climbed, I go right down to the route. I took him right up the route on one of the peaks, and he was watching it, and he said, why don't you make a tour? I didn't know what he was talking about. I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, you can record a tour, sound and sights and everything, just that you're doing this for me, and you can even put it on your website. So that's how it all came about. Let's go to chapter one. Now, we're hovering above Copiapo, Chile right here. Uh, and uh, Copiapo is the city that I took off from most of the time on these climbs. So each one of these tours, my intent is not to tell what goes on in the chapter. If I were to do that, then people would say, hey, why do I have to buy the book? I'll just go to his website and I'll know what happened in each chapter. So I'm pretty much silent on that. Uh, but my intent is to take the reader out to the peak show the reader, you know, the, the general surroundings, the geographical location of, of where we are, where I am. Now let's move the, let's move this along to about four minutes. But this is another aspect of the mountain and uh, I'm moving toward the mountain. I may not be moving right now, but let's go to a little over eight. I'm getting closer to the peak in this area. I keep plodding up the mountain. Now we can go to, uh, let's just Plug along here to 15, a little over 15. Here I am on one of the steps. You can read about it in the book what that is as I proceed up the mountain. So as I said, each one of these chapters, that's what I do. I take you out to the peak, show you the important features, and take you up the mountain with me and bring you back down. So this is another way for the reader to enjoy each particular chapter. Let's move on to another big content section, and that's photos. This was the most difficult thing for me physically because there's more than 300 photographs on the site. The printer scanner was on the floor at that time. So here I had all these photographs. I had to bend down, pick up the top of the scanning thing, put in the photo, close the cover, do the cropping, bend down, open the cover, pull out the... It was a bit difficult. Now, don't ask me why I didn't think about putting the scanner on top of the computer table. That's where it is now. Please don't ask. Let me explain something here. I've got photographs here for Ecuador, Bolivia, and Argentina, but those aren't uh, particular chapters. The photographs are from climbs that I took with a guiding company out of Washington State. Again, they don't figure in a chapter. I, I mean, I mention them parenthetically sometimes. But let's go to some pictures, and let's go to, let's say, Yuyayako, Chapter 3. Now, each one of the photo folders for a chapter are like this. There's generally 20, 25 pictures, something like that. Now, just to show you how to manipulate this, let's go to 3.8. Just click it, and of course you get the enlargement. 3.8, Giancarlo checks one of the rooms. He was my driver. And uh, then he passed away a couple of years later, and I tell how that happened. is rather tragic. Now, the, the significance of the numbers, now these are laid out chronologically. So it gives some kind of order, but more importantly, it's related to the book. Because in each chapter, if there's a picture that I think uh, would help the reader understand where I am in the text, I put the word photo in the left column, I give a brief caption, and then I direct the reader to where he or she should go. So 
let me say I've got one, I think, for 3.11, Alpenglow on the peak. In the text, I say, please see photo 3.11 in the chapter 3 folder. Now, I do that four or five photos for each chapter. This first page here of photos, if you hit the arrow to the right, then, of course, you see the other photos. A brief note about Panoramio. Panoramio is fun to work with. You know, you've got your own file, you load your photographs out there. The extra added benefit is when you enlarge one of the photographs, you've got a little Google map uh, off to the side. And you can go down right to where I took the picture. On the right-hand column there, we tell you how to download Google Earth. It's free, it's easy, it's very fast. Now we come over to Panoramio column here on the left. And why don't you click this site? Now what you see is the first page of six or seven pages in my Panoramio account with my photographs. Now these are not ordered by a particular mountain, and so it can be sort of confusing. What I did is I came up with tags for each particular mountain. Let's go to the tag Monte Pisces. So you click on Monte Pisces. Here are photos from the several times I went to Pisces. So you're probably saying, so what? Okay, so I got, you got more photos out there. The important thing about Panoramio is go to the right, and there's another box. Now, that's a Google Earth box. Now you get a larger view. There's pieces that's just to the right and below. So that's a fun thing about Panoramio. You can see where I actually took the photo from. Yet another way to enjoy the book. A short point about the uh, the movies, I didn't have to do much of anything. I took it to a professional editor. So he did the editing and pulled out the dross and the stuff that doesn't flow uh, or it just doesn't fit, too much noise or whatever. So that's the result that's up there on the site. Now if you hover over, for example, November 1998, we put in there an unsuccessful climb of Yuyayaka with my friend's ferry. The film opens with a discussion with Giancarlo's widow, Maria Esther and it's ferry at the La Casona Hotel. April 1999, an unsuccessful attempt on Tres Cruces with Gary, a client, not mentioned in the book. Now, these first four movies, they don't pertain to a particular chapter. So you're probably asking, well, why are they out there? Well, they go to some of the peaks that are mentioned in the book. And so if you watch one of these movies, for example, go down to March 2000, Attempts of Pieces and Tres Cruces, you can go out and you can see pieces. You can go out and see Tres Cruces. So when you read a particular chapter, for example, here in March 2000, I said chapter 6 does have a thing on Tres Cruces. Chapter 7 is a pieces chapter. There's another pieces chapter also. So these are meant for the reader to be able to see what the terrain is like out there in a movie and not, you know, in Google Earth or in a stationary picture. Now, the, the last four movies down there, are, as you can see, uh, there's chapter 9, part 1. Part 2, and then Chapter 10, Part 1, Part 2. Well, that's it. I hope you now see how the read and view approach will enhance your enjoyment of the book. And thank you very much for joining me.